Hey everybody, this is Stuart with Wine on the Dime. So today I'm at Compass Rose Winery and I am talking with Mark Watson and my wife, Taylor Gifford. Awesome. So, and today we're gonna be talking about wine in the Hill Country. So uh, the way I would like to kind of start this conversation is why don't you let us know about Compass Rose Winery? Um, we started off as a kind of a far off reaching dream. I'm a land surveyor and she's an attorney and we kind of wanted something more. And we started uh, my place, shoot, I want to say almost 10 years ago, over in Mason County, which is the uh. town north of uh, Fredericksburg. I had a little old, little, old turn of the century feed store and uh, had a couple of friends that were in the wine business. They had vineyards over there. And, and I went on my first wine tour and I'm like, this is what I want to do. People were having the best time. They were coming out. They were just, it was, there was no wrong answer. This person liked this wine, that one liked that. It was just beautiful. There was just fun. Everybody, there was no strife. There was no stress. There wasn't, there wasn't any of that in this business. So I said, this is something I want to do. And in the surveying world, there's nothing but stress, <laughs> man. It's, it, no one goes down the road going, hey, honey, guess what? Let's go spend $1,500 on a survey. They don't do it. Yeah. So usually it's not the funnest time when they call a surveyor. And uh, so I had this place and a couple of buddies and we kind of kind of got started going in things and it didn't really work out with those guys that some other problems of one that didn't start doing something. Yeah, it didn't do workouts so well. Let's just call it that. Th things happen. Th things, things happen. happen. That's right. Things <laughs> happen, right? And, um, but I still kept wanting to do it, kept going and going, and I always telling people that this is what I was going to do, and I and I had all the stuff done, and kept working to it. And so finally, 2011 was my do or die year, and uh, my business manager at the time thought I was crazy, said, you know, what are you doing? I said no, because I can't keep telling people that this is what we were going to do, and not do it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was real good friends with Chris Brundrett and Bill Blackman over at William Chris, and they helped me get started. And so the way we went, then I hired Rob Nida, was my first winemaker, and both of us set off. It was his first time as a uh, winemaker. And he had, uh, he had masters from uh, some school over in Europe, and fantastic guy, knew, knew what he was doing. So both of us, that's what we did. So our first wines were sitting there bucketing stuff out of the bins <laughs> into the thing, working hard and crazy, but it was some of the best times. And um, then I bought this place in 2013, which was kind of neat because 2013 has always been a significant number. I think people tend to look at 13 as a bad number. See, I'm, I'm definitely a Christian. There is uh, the 12 disciples and yeah, Jesus in there. 13 is a pretty 13. good number, man. Yeah. So uh, June 13, um, we ended up start opening this place. And in fact, the, a year before the actual company got started on June 13th, my survey business was done on June 13th. It was kind of significant on the way around. Well, it also keeps it easy just to remember when yeah. anniversary days <laughs> happen. Right, yeah, this is Founders <laughs> Day, right? And uh, so we, we got this place and um, I wanted, it, it was a big nasty jungle and we kind of, the place had sat here for years without this view. No one could even know this was here because it was just a jungle. And, but me being a surveyor, I was able to see through it and see the, the good things that kind of like kind of like a wine right mm -hmm. you know it starts off maybe you could do this maybe you could do that but then you kind of stick with it and see what it could be and then make it into it right and then carve it out and had a, a great place and I wanted people to experience life with uh, with a view get out of their cubicle leave the leave their concrete jungle alone and get out of that rat race and come out here flip flops shorts and glass of fantastic wine yeah. and sit here and with a bet. Well, right? uh, I, th I think you might have so. met that objective so far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Terrible. Because I, I got out of my cubicle, I got here, I don't mm -hmm. have flip flops because I they can't close. stay on my feet for some reason. Close. They're close enough. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't have, I have shorts in the car, but they just look chunky on me. I'm not going to wear them. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but I mean, overall, like, you, you pretty much met that goal. You got some yeah. great wine here. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, so, why don't you tell me a little bit? So, right now you're drinking the Chenin Blanc. Yeah, I had so Tell uh, me a little bit about that. Chenin Blanc is. Uh, Old vine, Chenin Blanc, from the oldest Chenin Blanc vines in state uh, around 1974 when they were planted. You know, big old fat suckers, it's beautiful. Um, this is the first year that we got that particular Chenin Blanc from the Martin Vineyard. It turned out to be really a fantastic wine and it's kind of clean, crisp, and refreshing. And kind of like, way we kind of like our wines, I like it 
It's good balance. It's got lots of character. Um, flawless. You know, something clean. I like it to be able to. I don't want funk in my wine, but I want something still to get some character. I want something you kind of have to think about a little bit yeah. and enjoy it. The, 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 this the, one's a little bit more on the refreshing side, so it's yeah. going to be, this is her pool wine, so it's <laughs> going to be, this is what, hey, I want a bottle of this, and I'm going to sit in my, you know, my uh, float and, and hang out. And, That's right. Yeah. It, it, it works out. So one of the things I noticed about it, so like, like typically Chenin Blancs, especially the ones I've had, tend to always have this kind of like very light syrupy finish, and I noticed that yours doesn't tend to do that it's it, it it still has that kind of very semi-sweet borderline semi-sweet uh element to it but it doesn't actually have that heavy syrupy finish so so, so what what is one of the things that you do to try to kind of like temper that element because i know people can go too heavy handed with shit and blocks i think we just let the fruit do the talking man that's pretty much what we did we did you go in here and we uh, uh, I know Tony did a few things to it, our winemaker at the time, and just getting it to where we wanted it, but we still wanted something crisp and clean. And we didn't want a whole bunch of, we didn't want the syrup side of things. And, uh, and, and to tell you the truth, I can't remember all the different things you did do. Really. <laughs> That's fine. We, we've kind of slept since then. Um, but uh, this year we did, well, and we we're trying to focus on, I mean, well, in the past, small winery, and where we're growing, you, you try different things, right? You're kind of snaking through what some stuff you think, hey, this could work or this could work. We've done gourmet restaurant, a couple different fantastic chefs. One of them is a good friend of mine, my fraternity brother. Brian's on 29, did a great job. He started here um, in the Hill Country, and even though he's got a lot of experience somewhere else, but you know, got it kind of in here. And and then we were kind of, so we tried that a couple times, had a, a couple different partners, and ended up having to buy that out. So we've kind of snaked through what we're doing now, we're going to focus our mainstay that was our first wine that we put out was a Merlot. That we that we were kind of known for that one. Uh, it's still been mainstay. We're going to continue to do that one. Um, we're going to stick to more of the Hill Country vineyards. I've got one vineyard over in Mason County. It's a real close friend of mine, uh, Robert Clay Vineyard, and we're going to get wine from there. And a new one, um, some good friends over here in Blanco County, up and coming. Uh, but he's been in the business a long time. There's little small vineyards, but I'd rather folks come and taste here until I can get my vineyard planted and to where instead of tasting either from another state mm -hmm. or from in the High Plains type of region. Texas is awesome, but I still think it'd be cooler to people show up and go, where, where you get the grape right here? Yeah. You know, we, this, exactly. this, you're going to taste wine from here. So, so, speak, so speaking of that, because Texas is so large, it's a huge geographical diversity yeah. in terms of what you can grow. So what do you think you're going to be planting on site when you do that? Still looking at Spanish varietals. I still think um, probably, you know, I'd look at even doing some Trigo or Tempranillo. Probably going to be that. Um, I want to try a little bit, though, of non Spanish varietals. Go like maybe a little Cab Sab. I've got a little spot really? over there. I'm going to try. It's real rocky. I'm going to be curious how, how that plays. Oh, yeah, I'm going to experiment a little bit. We're going to try some things. Um, I don't really know. Yeah, uh, all it. our soil samples point in one direction. Climate says something different. And then there's also well, what I well, can sell. The, the, so the, there's the, gonna, I'm going to yeah. play around with, you know, and, and every vineyard when they start, you can say this is going to work. And some of the guys that I know probably will be hearing this and some good friends that have got great wineries up and down that have been doing it a lot longer than I have, they know it. Well, I'm going to be listening to what they got to say, but I want to put in a little two cents yeah. too of what I want to do and what what kind of wine I want to drink. Right? Well, well, the interesting thing about Texas, especially within the Hill Country, is you're at this place where like five di different geographic regions of Texas collide mm -hmm. into a single thing. So you have the Edwards Plateau, you have the East Piney Woods, depending on where, how far east you are right. within the Hill Country. You have West, I can go into all of these things I'm not going to, it'll bore the hell out of you people. So, uh, uh, but you have this, this crazy, diverse climate and i've even seen uh people who have talked about experimenting with riesling out here which i think is just absolutely insane because i don't see how riesling will survive at all out here but they're talking about creating tarp tent formations and all sorts of other stuff to give it the right amount of partial sunlight that it needs and to try to like put fans in to keep the heat off of it and i was like all right if you want to make a 200 hundred dollar bottle of riesling go ahead have fun with it but uh, I just find it very interesting, like whenever people are talking about trying to experiment with things, like like you said, you mentioned using caps off, like that'd be very interesting to see how that would work out here because there have been people who've experimented with it, but they've had kind of mixed results with it. 
Well, they've got a few that over in uh, different areas have done really well. But you know, I don't know. We'll see what kind of we'll see where it plays out. I think. But that's what we can do here. Yes. Yeah. As, as Americans, that we can, we can take that adventurous, you know, part of us and put it to good use, right? And whereas in European countries, you're limited. You can only do this to call it this. Well, I, I don't have to go buy any of that crap. Yeah. You know, I can do what I want. And uh, and if I don't like it, it doesn't play out. Well, okay. Well, then that just, that's my end of it. That's I can just pull it up and plant something different. Yeah. Until I find the right one that works, and you know, and you kind of play off of our neighbors and figure out who found this to work, or or why does this work here versus this one? But each vineyard is, you know, is just like people. Well, it, it could work here, but maybe, you know, a couple miles down the road, it may not work out. Yeah. Maybe just their conditions are different than each each vineyard different. Well, okay. I mean, you also you know something like Terrar, like your 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 elevation is higher than most of the other wineries that I've mm-hmm. I've had out here. So just even being up on a big hill, mm-hmm. like that that can make a huge difference in terms of the like your drainage, the the types of minerality that you're going to have yep. within the soil versus someone who's right down there mm-hmm. who could get a totally different experience and they could have puddling, which I mean, then that stresses the plant in a different way where there's right. too much water and then dilutes the flavor. Right. Like like it, it it could be it could be an entirely different experience based upon what what happens even just a couple hundred feet going uphill i mean it's and so that's why when, when you mentioned that i was like this, this is a very interesting concept to experiment with like that and it's, it's good that you're willing to do that because i think a lot of people especially out in the hill country kind of play it safe they know like the spanish varietals the south italian varietals those do really well so mm-hmm. let's just plant those all the time and and not mess with anything. Well, <laughs> you get some of them that okay and some of these guys and some I would love to see what's going to work out. I'm really excited for what they got going on. They're playing some different stuff that no one really knows how to do it. Like Triga National, still, man, they, they're mm-hmm. fantastic wine. Got listed Texas Monthly, great, great bottle of wine. That's still a hand-to-hand sell because people still call it the Tortuga wine. They don't, they've never heard of it. They, it's not something they're accustomed to. So, you, you, we got to find our vibe and what we can do as a community, and then be able to hopefully get that moving. But. Um, you know, when I first got started, we were looking at what would go here, that same question, so what would you plant? And I was asking Rob about it, and Rob goes, well, I guess we'll find out. Because <laughs> it, it doesn't matter, cause yeah. you get, is it, or they go, is the place good for growing grapes? I don't know, we already bought it, so I hope it is. <laughs> sure. You know, like, yeah, you know it, it is what it is. So you, you, and you gotta, we'll just have to try it and see. You know, and I've been trying to get fruit in for the last couple of years, and life happens. Uh, different stuff that goes on and uh, you know got married in April and and just kind of we'll see where it takes us man it's the journey and that's that's what it's about it's 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 not coming out and going okay I've got 18 million dollars let's just plant everything exactly so it's pristine well you know what that's great but I can't do that yeah that's not what yeah. we're about you know we're gonna we're gonna do the best oh, I got I got table tops made out of tuba 12 that's fine you know whatever it's you know, it's not That's a big old fancy, fancy bar. Why, you know, why are you worried about that? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> it is what we. It's what we got. It's what we can say. You know what? This is what we yeah. do. And um, but the one, the one thing that I have to say about the different wines and different people that come in, especially these guys, all our friends, all these folks that are really working hard in Texas, um, trying to get us a name, trying to guess what we want. To, you know, who we are, is that they're giving it their all. You know, these are guys that you know. It, it, wineries are expensive. You know, I, I, I have a double life. I still survey full time and had a whole time of it that we were, I turned oil into wine basically. My company started off from nothing. We had uh, in, uh, my survey business started with $3,800 in a small town of Mason with nothing and built it up to six offices in three states and enough to buy this place good. But it's, it's stuff's expensive. And, yeah. you, and so the only way that we can do it is you just keep working on it. It's just a love affair. It's, 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 you're giving it everything you've got to this one bottle of wine that to put a smile on someone else's face. And you're, you're, you're hoping it sells, but at the same time, you still want them to, you want to make a great bottle of wine that they can be proud of going, this is great. Hey, honey, look at this, <laughs> you know, and, or go back and tell their friends and, 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 or even like we, we drink our own wine. That's kind of a problem. We, we drink too much of our own stuff. Well, and, uh, it's a it's a problem depending on which which perspective yeah, you need from. That's yeah. I, that's what. Yeah, I don't think it's that much. <laughs> I mean, it's if it's good, then right, like it's right, a it's right. not that bad of a problem. Or if it's a problem, it's a great problem to have. Like yeah. that's 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 the way to. But it's it's given your heart to something. Yeah. It's like the wine is a love affair. It's not 
it's not just something that you can just whoop, go down there and do. It's it is you know that just a, you know white wine takes what almost a six months, well, closer to nine months to a year yeah. to produce, right? So you've got or let's let's just look at say these like a vineyard, right? So we're going to take a vineyard, then we're going to make a bottle of wine, right? So you got what three to five years of money spent the land all the stuff it costs to get it in all the money it takes just to get it there then you got to go for a year to two years to make a good really nice red wine so you're you're shit you're five years in yeah. that's your millions seven. of yeah. dollars into before the one person walks in that door and yeah. gives you that dollar right yeah. just just a you're hoping hey really would you buy this bottle of wine because you know like we like to pay rent you know and yeah it, <laughs> it, well i mean you if know? you're looking from a from a yield and quality perspective most vines don't mature until they're between yeah. 10 and 30 years so i mean i mean you you, you, yeah. you got to, if you're really looking for that mm -hmm. payoff you it's a long-term investment yeah. so, i mean you yeah. really have to make sure and, and on top of that if you don't maintain the property you don't you don't do the viticulture correctly every it just goes yeah goes to shit. sorry yeah. I'll, I'll have to edit that out but <laughs> but, but it, it, or not i don't care uh, it, but but I mean it, it's it's yeah, you have to be really careful about it in terms of of, of how you're trying to grow this yeah. because like you said it's it's a, it's not only it's not only what you want to do it's a it's a passion project like you want to deliver something that's quality in order to do that you have to spend the time and the resources into it in order to make sure that you're delivering it on that without quality. without total risk without any you have an idea you have a hope you have a dream right without. You're not even sure that's going to come out, right? Yeah. You, you, I mean, it's 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 a total, it's a total leap of faith. You know, it's just, and that's really what it is. It's a lot of faith and man, a lot of hope. <laughs> so, I don't know. so, 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 we we kind of talked about your Shannon Block a little bit in the tasting room. I thought you mentioned you said I had something regarding an Albarino. Yes. So what's going on with that? Um, we've got it about ready to go. We were, I was hoping. To have it out uh, for our next uh, Journey uh, Wine Club pickup party, but uh, you know, once again, life tends to happen. Yeah, yeah, so I, have, I've, I haven't had a chance to bottle it, but it is fantastic. It's a, a good friend Brent Hoag's vineyard up at Blackwater Draw, which kind of southwest of Lubbock, and uh, turned out to be some fantastic wine. I am very excited that we're going to be able to put that out, and I got enough of it, and I'm 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 kind of. We've got enough to bottle way well more than than what we're going to really need for a while. But I'm I'm kind of debating maybe making a little sparkling out of some. But I think we'll just it, it, we'll probably just bottle it as is and and uh, do it. But it's beautiful. It's and and Albarino is one though that I think really is a white wine better than this and better than the other ones that I think would really do well. And because it it's that it grows well over there and you know in Spain Portugal area. Our new winemaker Joel is. Uh, He's loves it as well, and I think, uh, I think yeah, we sort of kind of, we, of we sort, I would we, love to plant, plant yeah. that as well. But yeah, yeah, we we sort of bonded over that when we were when we were talking in the yeah. tasting room because I had mentioned I was like, "Have you ever thought about doing a vino verde?" And at that point, they just kind of right. lost their minds because I don't know how many people from Texas actually talk about something like yeah. vino verde. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's it's one of my favorite varietals. So I'd, I'd actually be interested in seeing maybe something like a Vino Verde Albarino blend and, and have it incorporate some of the sparkling, uh, uh, sparkling elements that typically happen with something like a young harvest. Something like, fun, yeah, yeah. Yeah, something fun. Yeah. I mean, it just, it, 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 it'd be Well, that's where those are the things too, too that you can do when we get some of that stuff when we finally get our planning, everything here done. And that's, that's the thing, because then you can take it right in there, or you can walk down the vine three or four passes down and, and pick up the fruit that you want instead of feeling like you got to get it all right now, whether it's ripe or not, it's coming off, versus being able to pass through and pick off what you want and go in there and do with, you know different ideas and different things that you can do. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see how that kind of plays out over so, the So year. besides the Albarino, what other things do you have to do? Uh, this year, I'm super stoked. Uh, Chardonnay. And... Chardonnay, uh, surprisingly enough, is, is Dan McLaughlin at Robert Clay Vineyard over there. Okay. The last few years, he's won some awards with it, and d different wineries have. Uh, we sold out of ours. It's fantastic stuff. Um, so, real super proud of that. That was one of the wines that Taylor and I was kind of the first one. We, we picked it, and we processed it, and uh, and that was one I, I didn't... Uh, I've been making wine for a long time, but I always had another winemaker giving me a hand in that one. Well. This year, I decided, you know what, I'm going to do it myself, and I got some help and a little consulting work. But that was one Taylor and I did it, and Dan came over and helped, and 
we didn't get done at like 4:30 in the morning. She, I got pictures of her passed out in the chair, and she was, it was the coolest thing though. But it was a, it's going to be a great wine. Um, that was my first harvest, and that's the hardest work I think I've ever done. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, not too long ago, at the beginning of August, I helped at Lost Maples, uh -huh. uh, and I went down there and helped harvest some of their Lenoir that they had over there, and and when we started like. 8:45, and I was sitting like, "Oh, okay." By the time 11 o'clock rolled around, I was sitting here like, "I'm dead." Yeah. Like, there's no yeah. way. It was fun for about <laughs> 15, 20 minutes, yeah. and then not so much. Yeah. yeah. Like by the time we finished getting the netting over the vines, uh -huh. yeah. At that point, I was like, "Okay, this is really hot," and we haven't even started harvesting grapes yet. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a yeah. long day. We started at 5 a.m. with head lamps on. Mm -hmm. so that was probably smart. Way smarter until, than what I did. Uh, we get down to what three? Three o'clock, fifteen yeah. till three. Yeah, we loaded up the truck, <laughs> hauled ass, got here, and then we some of the stuff I thought was clean was not clean that I thought. So we spent a couple hours cleaning the equipment again, getting ready to go. We started maybe at eight o'clock, started at nine o'clock, started processing it, and then pressing off. And like I said, Dan and I finally just at the end of the day, and I didn't put a hard press on that Chardonnay. Uh, we were fine. I was done. And he was about. We'd fall over and just said, "We're done. That's it." I'd come crawling to bed. She had to leave early, so she she cut off a couple hours before, maybe at one, so I'm at two o'clock. And I come whining in bed. She gave me a hug, kissed me, and then we both fell back asleep. She got a couple <laughs> hours gone. She's gone. I You're lucky you got that. More. Yeah. I was like, yeah. 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 It was. Really uh, so we got, you know, yeah. We got a hug. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was a special day. It was like, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been married for 10 years. Yeah. My wife doesn't say hi to me when I get home. Yeah. Oh, that's okay, yeah, rough. Yeah, probably yeah. getting to sleep on the couch after that one. That's, that's okay. <laughs> Fine. I'll, um, I'll, I'll deal with that. Then we have uh, <laughs> same vineyard. We did a fantastic Merlot, and I haven't had a chance to post all the time lapse. So I this year I was like, because some people go and look at some wineries that don't necessarily make their wine. Uh, they get somebody else or a custom approach, which is cool. That's what works out on theirs, but and, and it's fine. And there's nothing wrong with it. I think it's a good way if you have a friend or somebody that can help out and do some things and it's awesome. But I'd rather be able to say, you know what? I made it right down there. That's that's my wine. Better for worse. That's me. Yeah. And uh, so we got a bunch of time lapse photos and stuff. I got to post, and it's it's kind of but the Merlot is fantastic. Uh, we did a Tempranillo uh, and a Tempranillo Tariga brand. The Tempranillo is from Blanco County. Tariga's from Mason County, that's gonna turn out awesome. It does that Tempani or Tariga National is awesome. Um, we did I got a little bit of Ruby Cab and a little bit of uh, Barbera. The Montepulciano got nixed. It didn't turn out the way it was mm. right before that big rain and everything, it just was not it didn't turn it's, out alright. Yeah, it's we, gonna we, taste we, like great Yeah, we yeah. just let it go and then um, Oh, and I had a little, I did a, kind of something cool, I did a, we did machine harvested the Merlot. So, you know, a lot of the juice in the bottom, by the time we got over here, the, the bins are already got, they're already crushed and destemmed as soon as they go into the bin. And so I was able to suck the juice off the bottom and did a rosé out of it. So I'm oh, okay. be really cool to see what that Merlot rosé does. And uh, I've got a little bit of some um, um, rosé in my bed. And we'll see how that turns out. So, but uh, that's about. I, I, I'm going to go a little smaller this year. I'm not doing the big, the big vineyards and things like this. One, it, it, it's just what I can kind of what I my reality suggests, and I can, what I can control now that it's me and Joelle, and uh, we're going to just kind of keep it small and cool and um, make it the best wine we possibly can. And uh, one thing I will not refuse to put out wine that is got flaws in it or something bad that's that good. I won't drink as long as if you see me drinking, no, it's good. <laughs> good. Yeah, because otherwise I, I want to make sure it's right. So that's what we got going on. Yeah. That's just something that uh, we'll be spending out and keeping small, maybe 1,200 cases of wine production. Just something small, we'll just sell it straight out of the tasting room. Maybe a couple of select cool places that get a little wine here, a little wine there, but nothing. I, I don't want to distribute. I, I'd rather be able to present my wine in the way that that who we are instead of just another name on the show. Yeah. And I think just. what we both love so much about this place is really the community and just the experience that people have in the community. And so keeping it local and keeping it small and it preserves that authenticity mm -hmm. that is so important to Mark and to me. No, so one of the one of the things that I really love, especially about the wineries out here, is it doesn't necessarily feel like everybody is as competitive against each other as they are 
compared to other spaces. Like when I went up to Washington State, it like asking to shoot on property, one of the things people asked me was, are you going to be sharing this with other wineries? And I said, well, I'm gonna be posting on the internet. Like, I don't know if that counts as sharing it, but I'm not gonna be like showing them your backroom operations. Like, I'm, it's just not something I'm, I'm even gonna post on my site. And they were very concerned about things like that. But a lot of the wineries that I visit here, people tend to talk about how, oh yeah, I just had, I just went up there the other day and has a, a bottle of Chenin Blanc at Compass Rose. And I went down there to Ron Yates and had a bottle of this. And they, they really talk about how a lot of people really collaborate with each other around here. I think it's a, so being newer, right, to the Texas wine industry, I mean, just married Mark. Um, I mean, my perception of Texas wine is that it, it wasn't good, you know? It was, my my idea of it was it was the, the box stuff that you bought at the grocery store and um, and one of the things i've been so amazed and impressed by is the collaboration of this community because it is you know in order for texas to really be respected and appreciated as a fantastic wine making area is for all of us to collaborate and work together to make the best wine and so the fact that bill and chris william chris helped market started i think speaks volumes um, you know, we collaborate with other wineries in this area, and so the better the better we are, the better they are, mm -hmm. and vice versa. And so there is very much of this collaborative um, community to help each other out because it just improves and better's the wine and the industry in this area as a whole. Yeah, and I mean, I, I, I would, I would, I mean, Texas is continuing to grow the wine industry within the state. It's starting to kind of spread out. I think part of the problem Texas has had is that it doesn't have necessarily the volume production that a lot of the other states have where they can really kind of start pushing it out to be experienced with other folks. Uh, I think someone who's probably at 10 to 15 years behind us or about the Finger Lakes in New York, they're, they're kind of in the same situation that we were about 10 to 15 years ago where they're just kind of really trying to push out some of that volume. And when we're getting to the point where now when I travel, I can actually see some Texas wines outside of Texas, which is awesome, um, but it's it's one of those things where we're not going to be able to do it on our own unless we work together and and having that that concept of working together i think is very interesting because like i said I, it's not something i experienced when i went to the northwest they were very much like we we have an advantage over a lot of folks we want to kind of keep it where, whereas like you mentioned you're working with a whole bunch of people and trying to get that right type of thing or cre create that next new thing and i feel like texas is one of those places where there's a lot of really good innovation going on in terms of where we're trying to push the wine industry for the next few years well and the real friend uh so to give you an example of working together besides just going down and drinking from everybody's spot right? <laughs> which is cool and, and yeah, that's fun hard, but <laughs> all right so uh chris brundrick called me the other day their press broke and I'd finished our, we'd already pressed everything off for us. We were done. So I did, they just came and borrowed. They got our press and our, our conveyor belt. They, they got it down there. I got Helmy, uh, Eric Helmy's a real close friend of mine too. I got his, um, um, I got his bottler and I do surveys and it's a bunch of stuff for his and his. Same thing with Bill, I do surveys <laughs> for them. And then, so we, there was a whole lot of swapping. There's, uh, we're not just swapping, but just favors yeah. and different things, making sure everybody gets taken out. So, and then Eric knew that I had, didn't have the presence, so some of the Mavet that we were getting in, a little bit, he called me up and said, hey, do you want me to do this? And I said, yeah, man, that'd be great, because no, I don't have <laughs> You don't have a press. You don't have someone else for <laughs> <Across> it. <the street. laughs> you know? And, you know, uh, I've done, you know, different things. Uh, just everybody, just, just something breaks, something does this. You know, we borrow tractors, borrow trailers. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, hey, can you do that? And, and the only rule is you break it, you fix it. You know, and right. it, but it's all but, but whatever, that's, you, but that's you make it right. that's also just Texas. Yeah. Well, it's like... It's, like you know, everybody like it's it's very i mean like you can see what's example going on right now in houston with all the flooding right. people from all over the state and even that some of the other states are coming in and helping out with that like i have i have friends who have boats and stuff like that who immediately once the, the flooding hit houston they were gone they went to go yeah. help rescue people and yeah. i mean that's amazing that's just the way that texas is but that doesn't just mean you have to have your house underwater to do that you could have that's a press right. break. That's <laughs> that's right. yeah it just stuff it's, breaks the things happen and, and it's you know because there's okay there's there's a cool thing about wine. Wine's like people, right? So just like I was telling you earlier, there, there's no wrong answer in wine. It's there's they're different. There's nothing. There's not one that's bad or good. Maybe in you know everybody has their own opinion, but it still doesn't make a difference. There's no one bad or good. And it, it the same thing with our community is is we all in it together. The you can't have one wine. No one's going to show up and have just the Chenin Blanc. 
there's no other wineries out here. There's nothing that they go, you'll come in and look at this wine and you'll taste it and then go, that's good. Is that, is that all you got? You know, and then they're, then you're like, okay, honey, well, you may buy a couple of bottles and leave. And then you're like, I guess that's a winery. But it's, if you have five or six wines, you got five or six wineries. Now we have granted a bunch, but there's no, there's no real, there's no competition. We're all yeah. in it to the consumer to come out and have a great time. Yeah. And find that wine or that winery that's for you. Everybody's different, so it's this one may this may not sing to somebody. They may want a little sweeter. They may like fruit wine. They may like only dry red. I don't know, but there's it's finding that one that fits and then relax and have free time. Yeah. And because there yeah. are so many choices out here, you know, and so many great choices, then it's just a bigger draw for people. Yeah. You know, like Mark said, if it was just a couple, it wouldn't be the same. It wouldn't have the same attraction for people coming out. But when they come out, they really do have choices, and so. Yeah. The more wineries that are out here, the more great wineries that are out here, we really just help spoil it because it brings more people out. Yeah. And everybody, as long as they're loving it, doing things from, you know, the, the guys that sell a sweeter bottle of wine to the folks that do a big old dry red, it, it doesn't yeah. matter. There's, there's folks that go, I, I see them come in all the time and uh, I want this or I want that. You know, I will tell them like, okay. Please leave your limitations at the door. <laughs> Take your blinders off. Relax. Let's go this. Enjoy what had, we have. Oh yeah, I had one. I had one lady come in, and she was sitting there like this, and and she goes, and you know, would you, you know, she had her glass, and it, she goes, no, I don't want to taste it. I'm like, you sure? You're you're on a tour. They already paid for your tasting. You you you, you, you have already paid for it. Yeah. So no, I don't like it. I only like sparkling. Sure, there's 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 only maybe two wineries that have like two bottles, three bottles of sparkling, yeah. somewhere along the line, and, and that's it. And said, so she sat there and had the miserable time. <laughs> she had a miserable time the entire day. And it was like, you know what? You're already here. Yeah. Try the wine. Try it. If you don't like it, pour it out. Yeah. You know, you don't you don't have to tell well, it bad. If you well, don't like it, you don't like it. And, and a know? perfect example is that. Yeah, yeah, a perfect example of that is a long time ago, I, I when I when I started my when I started the blog before it actually became a video channel, mm -hmm. I had mentioned I am never going to review a sweet wine. I've never found a sweet wine that I like. I think they're all atrocious. They're all bad. I'm never going to do it. And then one day I found this damn Riesling, and I was like, man, this is good. And and I could I couldn't stop thinking about it. And then after that, I said, you know what? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually open it up and start doing some sweet wines. And I found some sweet wines that I like, and. Um, it's, it's one of those things where it's, if I hadn't just, just finally said, you know what, I'm going to just try this. And the only reason I tried it was because I have Dachshunds. It was Dachshund Riesling. And I just I just tried this wine, and I ended up liking it. And it was kind of given to me as a gag gift because yeah. I was known as the Dachshund guy. And and, and then I, I tried this wine. Oh, wow, I was like, the Dachshund guy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We have some wine club members who, uh, they came out and they said, you know what, we don't like Texas wine. We don't like it at all. And But they're in your wine club? Oh, yeah. they, are, they, are, they are now. Yeah, they are. They, they're the number. They they have bought. Go ahead. They they bought more wine than hands down than any other wine club member, and and the one that they walked out with, they spent twenty five hundred dollars worth of wine, and they were like, uh, and the guy that was tasting said, uh, they taste it and go and told them flat out, we do not like Texas wine. We're only here because we're staying at the Casitas, and we're here for anniversary, and that's the only reason why we're here. They they tried one wine and went. That's good. And they go and they ask. You got a piece of paper. I'm gonna write down. I may buy some wine. And and Charles at the time was like going. Well, I, I'll remember. We can do it at the end. He goes, No, I need to write this down. He started writing down how many cases they wanted. <laughs> and wanted out with twenty five hundred dollars worth of wine. And 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 they go, God, this is good. You know. And then and then we've you know done all kinds. Of yeah. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Your Cabernet Franc was good. It was really yeah. good. I was I was like I, I was smelling that and I was like. That smells like it has a little bit of blueberry notes. I tasted it and I was like, that is blueberry. And that's really good. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm very happy about so that it's one. Changing, it's yeah. changing a lot of people that, to me, when you set limitations that in life or whatever that you're trying to do, you're just you're just screwing yourself out of the, what the possible, you know, excuse me, what, what could happen. Yeah. What are the possibilities that could be from that situation versus you already preset that you're yeah. going to have a miserable time. So any of the, the folks that come out, like, open your mind, man. Try it. You're in front yeah. of it. Enjoy it for and, and enjoy this wine for what it is, not for what it's not. You, no matter which way, no matter how hard I work, I can't make this Chenin Blanc into a Cap Sauvignon. Yeah. Well, quick. Don't worry about it. That that's if you say only drink Cap Sauvignon. 
once again, you've just now restricted yourself on how much good a time that you could possibly have because you restricted yourself. And I think if you let go of all that limitation, that you may find that, oh wow, this Chenin Blanc's amazing. Mm -hmm. Or white wine versus if you only drink red. I don't know, you're here, try yeah, it. Try you it. Know? And, um, the worst thing it. that's gonna happen is you're still gonna drink wine and you just may not like it as much as what you normally have, but you still drink yeah. wine. But there's well, I mean, the possibility that you might really like it. Yeah. And, and then, then, and then now, it's like, hey honey, I'd like this. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That's the number one thing that no matter which winery that people go into, you're here on the strip. You're, tr you're, you're obviously coming out to enjoy wine. Come out, let go, have fun. And be respectful of others, you know, that someone else, you know, that's a big deal about it. Be respectful of others doing the same thing and uh, you're, all, you're all in it together. You're all in to get out of that concrete jungle, to get away from your cubicle, get away from that. And re relax and enjoy what could be. And, and, and then you'll, and to me, a wine, there's, you can find anything in a wine. You know, and if you walk in and you're miserable, you know, you'll be, you'll find misery in that bottle of wine. You come in, open that heart up, and open your mind up, <laughs> you're gonna have the best time. Yeah, and it'll be great. And 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 you'll find a, you know, you'll find a fellowship. You'll find the kindred spirits out here doing the same thing that just, just want to find, just be happy. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah. Thank you. Well. Anyway, this has been Stuart with Wine on the Dime. I'm at Compass Rose Cellars. If you like today's video, please like, subscribe, and comment. Uh, do you have a wine club that people yeah. can subscribe yeah, to? Yeah, a little uh, journey uh, is our wine club. Um, we're actually, surprisingly enough, we're uh, closing it this uh, week to <laughs> buy, not closing the wine club, we're putting it on as uh, a waiting list. But my idea is it's not just to get discounts on wine. It's being part of our journey. It's being part of us. Being that part we're. Of the community. It's our community to where people can go, and I want to know every single wine club. I want to know them where we're all family, and some of them that somebody else has signed up. I don't know everyone, so we're going to shut it down. Any new membership for a while until I know it. You know, both of us know extensively everybody here, and when they come out on third Sundays and that's wine club day and uh, and hanging out that. It, it's a, it's like coming over to our house. Mm -hmm. It's like coming. We're here. We'll be out here hanging out. It's like we'll probably be cute. We'll probably be barbecuing or something like that. And people just come out and be part of our experience. And that's what we want. So I'm not saying don't join the journey, please. But it, it's wait wait your turn. I want to know who you are. Yeah. I want we, we want to be we want to be in this with you. And and so um, yeah. All Let's right. Go. So like you said, if if this video is out before this is shut off, go ahead. Go in and register. If not, join the wait list because I've definitely had a blast coming out here and hanging out with these folks. Mark Taylor, thank you very much oh, for having me out here. here. Anyway, like I said, this is Mr. Stewart with Wine on the Dime. Like today's video, please like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you guys again soon with another video review from Wine on the Dime. Have a good one.